Hi student, today we continue our lesson that's a 4.2 Semiconductor diodes, but I still go to part 1 only because too long on uh, the, this lesson So I just make uh, separate become 2 lah. So we continue with this one lesson Okay, let's see the first part We need to introduction for the semiconductor diodes Okay, before we go to uh, learn more about the semiconductor We need to know about the uh, characteristic Okay, let's see the first part Okay, the first part they show about the material that has an electrical conductivity but the conductivity is between the conductor and also the insulator that means they are between okay now we go and see the second one okay we got example example from our syllabus we just learned about the two semiconductor the first one is a silicon another one is a germanium okay let's see the second one about the charge carries the charge carried for the semiconductor that's a depends on the electron and also the hole. Hole is what? Hole is a positive charge. Electron is a negative charge. Okay, then we go to conductivity. Okay, conductivity means conduct electricity. So for the semiconductor, uh, they can conduct electricity when the temperature increase. Okay, and the last one is resistant. Resistant for the semiconductor also same. They just add the middle. That's a between the conductor and also the insulator. Okay, now we go to the another one. There's a comparison between the energy gap. Okay, the energy between the insulator, semiconductor, and also conductor. Okay, let we see the conductor first. Conductor, everybody know they're easy to conduct electricity. So that's why from the charge carriers, that means from the electron, they want to move. That means must be easier. So can you see the diagram? Here don't have any gap. The straightforward combine. So this one we call no band gap for the conductor. They can straightforward conduct electricity, transfer the energy. Okay, let's see the second one. Second one is a semiconductor. Semiconductor when the electron they want to travel, they want to come up from the hole, they need some energy. That means they need some uh, temperature to help. So that's why the electron can be moved over the band. So they got one of the narrow band gap at the center. So when you want to over, that means your voltage must be higher. Over the gap, so that means you can conduct electricity. Okay, let me see the last one. The last one is the insulator. Insulator, the gap is a more bigger. Okay, wider band gap. So that means the electron there's a cannot conduct electricity because the gap is too large. So they cannot over. So from here we can say the insulator they cannot conduct electricity. Okay, now we go through the uh, semiconductor. Okay, let's see the diagram here. This one is a silicon. Okay, you can see about the covalent bond and also the electron. Okay, let me go to explain about the charge carries in the semiconductor. Okay, first one, the, semi, uh, the silicon, they got four valences. They got four valences surrounded with the atom. Okay, it means they got four of the valence electron. Okay, they are shared between the four other neighboring atoms because they need eight of the valence, is it? So that's why they need to share. Okay, to form the four covalent bonds. Now at the room temperature, the silicon they just like the insulator because the temperature, just room temperature, do not heat up. So that means the electron cannot move outside. Okay, now we're going to see, but when the temperature increase, if you make the temperature become higher, so you find it, the vibration become bigger. So that's why the electron can be come out. Okay, so this one, they want to show about the valence hole and also the valence electron from the silicon. So when you see this part, they got extra of the hole. Okay, the yellow color represent by the hole. Then after that, the blue color represent by the electron. So that means when the electron just move, just move, that means they got empty hole. So from here, the electron will jump. When they jump, we call it free electron. After that, they got empty hole. Like this, we call it is a charge carriers. Now the electron can move, means the semiconductor can conduct electricity. Okay, let's see this part. This part is a explanation for the charge carries. Okay, the vibration of the atom that causes some of the electron to break 
after that free the bond okay now when the electron they remove from the covalent bond they leave behind the vacancy so that means when the electron they just move far away you find it that got empty space they left it so this one empty space we call it as a hole so that means before that is a positive and negative that means electron they are together when the electron start to move that means the left is a hole that one is a positive charge so free electron that's a negative charge and the hole is a positive charge so these two things we call it as a charge carriers okay the conduction in the semiconductor movement of the free electron and also the hole but both in opposite direction okay now we see the semiconductor they can conduct electricity but you compare to the matter sure is a semiconductor become poor why because the number of the electron for the semiconductor is a less okay now we see the diagram we got free electron there's a black color circle that's a negative charge the hole is uh, the white color that one is a hole okay from the third diagram okay first one the electron jump they jump to fill in the hole okay then you see the second diagram the electron jump again go to fill in the second hole can you see the first hole now is empty already okay now the electron continue to jump to fill in the last hole so we left how many hole behind we got two hole behind so from this one diagram we find it the electron keep jumping left hand side they keep to jump to left hand side how about the hole hole is keep uh, stay at the behind is it so they keep stay at the right hand side so from this one diagram actually is a uh, electron to move the moving electron is go to left hand side then the hole is never moved they just leave by the electron so they keep going to the right hand side so this one is what i want to miss about the electron how to move out from the hole okay then we go and see how the semicon can conduct electricity okay from here we can see the conductivity semiconductor can be increased by the two situation okay the first one we call increased temperature so just now I told you when the temperature increase, the electron can come out from the semicon so they can conduct electricity. Now the second situation is adding impurity. That means you add something into the semiconductor. Okay, so when you add something to the semiconductor, this process we call it as a doping. Okay, doping. So this one doping, the definition is process of adding a small amount of impurity to the semiconductor okay now we go and see what is the impurity okay atom of the impurity you add should have the same almost the same size okay now we recall back the silicon silicon got four electron is it so that means when you add the impurity is almost the same size either three electron either is a five electron so this one we call almost the same size Okay, by acting the different kind of the semi, uh, the impurity, then the two types semiconductor can be obtained. So I don't care you add the three electron, or you go to add the five electron. After you do the process of the doping, then two types of the semiconductor they will produce. Okay, the first type we call it as a N type. N stand for negative. P type stand for positive. So that means after you do the doping, we got two types of the semicon to be produced. Either is a positive type, either is a negative type. So can you see this one diagram? Okay, they add the P. This one P is a phosphorus. When they add ready, can you see got extra one of the electron to come up? So this part we call it is an N-type because you got extra electron. Okay, now we're going to see how to produce a p-type okay you want to produce a positive type of the semiconductor we need to process okay now we need to see what impurity we need to add to produce a p-type semiconductor okay first one here got some hints to help you 3p okay after that they got mentioned buggy okay we see what is a 3p and also buggy okay 3 is stand for trivalent Trivalent means you got three electron. Okay, P means stand for P-type. So this one is a P-type. 
you need to add trivalence. Okay, dotting material, which which one material should be trivalence? Okay, from here the short form should be buggy. You see what's a B? B is a boron. A is a aluminium. G is a gallium. Then the I is a indium. So we got four example is doping to produce a trivalence. So this one buggy actually is an impurity lah. Okay, row of doping of the material, atom receiver. We call it as an atom receiver. Why I call it as an atom receiver? You can say atom accept, acceptable also can, receiver also can. Okay, we see the diagram. Okay, so from here, can you see this one silicon? When they add about the boron, they got one of the empty space because boron just got trivalence. So they got uh, less of one electron. When the less of one electron means you got extra one of the whole. Okay, when you extra one of the whole positive charge, that means you need to accept any electron. So when you can accept any electron, we call it is an atom receiver. That means you can say atom for acceptable. Any electron just come, you want to accept. So from here, the majority charge carrier for the p-type is a hole. Okay, the minority is a free electron. So this one is a characteristic for the p-type semicolon. Okay, let me go and see the explanation. How to build the p-type semiconductor. Okay, the first one. Uh, a p-type semiconductor is produced when trivalence atom are added to the semiconductor atom. Okay, B, only formed by trivalent three bond atom are complete. If you want to produce a p-type, you just can add the three bond tri uh, the atoms. C, the vacation is a the vacancy is a hole with the positive charge. Majority is a hole. Minority is an electron. So the trivalent atom will accept any free electron. So you can call it is a acceptor atom. Receiver atom also can, acceptor atom also can. So this one is a diagram for the uh, semiconductor. Extra hole. Okay, after P type, sure is an N type. N type is a uh, negative type of the semiconductor. Okay, here also got hin, phi n and apa. Okay, we see what means of phi n and a p a apa. Okay, phi means pentavalence. So that means later you need to add the electron, uh, the impurity is a phi electron. So we call it is a pentavalence. Okay, n type. After you add, they will become the negative type. Okay, doping material. Let's see what impurity we added. Okay, APA is stand for the first one, antimony. A, P is a phosphorus. Another A is a arsenic. Okay, so this one is an example for the impurity doping to produce an N-type semicolon. Okay, row of the doping material. What's a row here? Row here now is an atom donor. Just now it's a receiver. Now it's a donor. That means you want to donate. Okay, why this one want to donate? We go and see the diagram. Okay, silicon. Okay, they add the uh, PB. Okay, now after add the PB, you find it, they got free electron to come up. They got extra one of the electron. When the extra one of the electron means the majority now is an electron, is it? So if you got extra electron now, you want to donate. You want to donate for anybody. So we call it as a atom donor. Majority charge now is a free electron. Minority should be the whole. Okay, let's see the explanation. How to create the n-type semicon. Okay, first one, uh, n-type semicon is produced when pentavalence atoms are added to the semiconductor atoms. So pentavalence means got five valence of the electron. Every pentavalent atom, they will donate a free electron because there will be one of the extra electron. So majority now is a free electron. Minority is a whole. 
So from here, the pentavalent atom will be supplied the free electron. So we can call it as a donor atom. So this one is a impurity you add. This one is a, a arsenic. Okay, this one is an arsenic. So you can find it. Arsenic, they got one extra free electron. So this one free electron is donor. Donate to anyone they need the electron. So this one is a n-type semiconductor. Okay, after we see the n-type, we see the p-type. Now we need to combine. When you combine the two types of the semiconductor, now we got another new name to produce. This one we call semiconductor diode. Okay, when they just join together. Okay, p-type. We join, we join with the terminal positive, is it? Because there's a positive type. So this one we call it as an anode. Okay, the N type we must join with the negative terminal. So this one we call cathode. Okay, this one is a symbol. Make sure you know how to draw the symbol. When you see the triangle, uh, this part should be joined with the positive. So there's an anode. So this one, the sharp of the triangle, they must join with the cathode negative. Okay, this one is a component the component of diodes okay now we go to see the semiconductor uh, actually is what semiconductor diode actually is a what's the function okay you can see this part okay they show what's the meaning semiconductor diode is to allow the current to flow through in one direction only so that means they just let positive to negative. If the ballet negative go to negative, uh, negative go to positive, the semiconductor diode will block it. So this one's a function for the diodes. So from here, they also explain a diode is a component that allow the electric current to flow in one direction only. You also can say diode actually is a one-way waft to the electric current. So if I using direct current, that means that's okay, la, no problem. If I using alternating current, that means first cycle you can pass through the diode, second cycle the diode will block it. So this one is a function of the diodes. So you can see this one is a semiconductor diodes, p-type and type. Then after that they join with cathode and also the anode. So this one is a symbol for the diodes. Okay, let's see this part. How does the PN junction uh, diode work? Okay, we're going to see the diagram here. Okay, first one, we talked already. The semiconductor diode is an electron and also the hole they need to drift is it. Okay, so from here, we're going to see the nodes. Semiconductor N-type and P-type, they are brought closer together. Number two, uh, the electron and the hole, they will migrate across the junction. They will each other to transfer. Okay, when they just transfer the center, they will create one of the depletion layer. So this part, we call it as a depletion layer. Okay, for this one depletion layer, when they just cross, they will create the voltage. Okay, create the voltage for this one junction. So from here, we find it, uh, the PT, PT means potential different set up across the depletion layer so from here they just want to explain two type combined together after that the charge carry will start when they just move they create the center got one of the junction so this one we call it depletion layer or you say pn junction finally they create the voltage for this one junction so from here let's see the a when the p type semicon material is contact with the n type a layer, we call it depletion layer, is built then at the middle. So at the middle, so this one we call it depletion layer. Okay, this one is a PN junction. Okay, we can see about the, uh, you can say PN junction, you can say it's a depletion layer. So at this part, this one is a whole part, p-type. This one is a n-type, free electron. Okay, we see the B. At this one region, you find it the electron from the n-type material and also the hole is from the p-type. They will drift each other. They will drift, they mean want to go to each other part. 
pass through the junction. So this one junction, we call it as a depletion layer. When they pass through, they can make the junction become more narrow. Okay, more narrow. If can pass, lah. if cannot pass, then it cannot narrow. So from here, regarding to the different charge semiconductor, okay, because of the different charge, left and right is a different charge, pass through this layer. So this layer will produce one of the potential difference. They got one of the voltage they will create at the center. So this one voltage, we call it as a junction voltage. So this one junction voltage must be very small. If you can over the junction voltage, mean you can drift. If you cannot over the junction voltage, means the electron and also the hole, they cannot drift to each other. If they cannot drift to each other, means you don't have any charge carriers means the semiconductor cannot function. So from here, this one junction voltage is to prevent the charge carries from drifting across the junction. So that means the situation you want to cross the junction, first, your voltage must be high enough. High enough means over the junction voltage. So that means you can drift. When you just can drift, that means the circuit is okay. You can conduct electricity. Okay, now we're going to see the junction voltage. Okay, we say if you over, that means you can go. Now we're going to see the rules. Okay, here is a depletion layer. Inside the depletion layer, they got junction voltage. Okay, now we see the junction voltage for the germanium and silicon. Okay, let's see the graph. Okay, for the germanium, the orange color one, there's a 0 0.3 volt. If you want to pass through the junction voltage for germanium, Okay, they must over the 0 0.3. If you over 0 0.3 means you are forward bias. Forward bias means you can pass through the electricity we call forward bias. If I using the semiconductor is a silicon, that means you must over the 0 0.7 volt. Over 0 0.7 volt, that means no problem, they can conduct electricity. Okay, if you are less, example, you less than 0 0.3 or you less than 0 0.7, that one we call reverse bias. Reverse bias means the semiconductor diode cannot function. Means they cannot conduct electricity. Just like the AC current. First round they can conduct. Second round they cannot conduct because there's a reverse bias. So you, I want you to think what situation uh, the current cannot pass through the junction. The PN junction or you say depletion layer. Okay, too small only 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 but what situation the electron and also the hole cannot drift okay they cannot drift means they cannot over this voltage so you need to think about that what situation the situation we call it reverse bias lah so you need to find out what means of the reverse bias so this one i will explain for the next lesson the part two about the reverse bias the situation why uh, the electron cannot pass through the depletion layer. That means they cannot over 0 0.3 volt. They also cannot over 0 0.7 volt. So this one is uh, uh, the tips to help you to find out the answer. Okay, hope you can find out the answer. Then we can discuss for the next lesson. Okay, from here, that means some of the tutorial questions actually you can start already. Okay. So our lesson just until this part one, then the next lesson I will uh, coming soon will upload lah. Okay, thank you for your watching. Okay, so hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Thank you.